Hello everyone, welcome to Nanda Hobbs and a very big welcome to Tom Adair and the launch of his new exhibition titled Chromatones. This is a fantastic show, it's really, really exciting. Uh, we're a little bit disappointed we're not having an opening night, but it is of course going to save my liver anyway, um, which, is, uh, which is one little good thing about it, I suppose. But um, it is a fabulous show to, to view online. And also, if you'd like to uh, drop by by appointment in uh, Sydney, you're most welcome to as well. We're going to talk a little bit about the show because we thought that there's lots lots of really interesting things going on in it and uh, firstly Tom if you can tell me a little bit about this uh, this body of work uh, it, it was based around the United States is that right yeah so um, we first started discussing doing a show last year yep. and I knew from the first series that I wanted to evolve from the Palm Springs um, houses in that sort of setting and I wanted to sort of focus on the desert and houses within that landscape. And that's the desert sort of west of West Coast America into Correct, yeah, uh, so Nevada? Yeah, uh, not quite as far as Nevada, but it was through the Mojave Desert, um, Palm Desert, California Desert, and then we drove down through to, um, to Tucson in Arizona, so it was mm -hmm. sort of down to the Saguaro National Park, that sort of area. And how many weeks were you on the road? Uh, three weeks. Sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it was early morning. Uh, yeah, right, okay. It was tough every morning, we were up at 5 a.m. to get the sunrise. Right, okay, so... All the skies that you can see. Yep. So you, you took all the images in this exhibition? Correct, yeah. Right, okay. And so did you scout out the houses or...? Um, yeah, there was some scouting of the houses before I went. I tried to find houses that were iconic modernist houses within that desert landscape. And what is it about the houses in the desert landscape that attracts you? Um, I, I think it, it's a bit of a... From the start of the year there was the bushfires and in our household we've sort of really looked at how we live with climate change and sustainability and I think what I wanted to concentrate on was looking at how or where that equilibrium is between earth and human interacting with it and with the desert being such a harsh landscape you, you never really know when it when a house is situated there you don't know if the, the landscape is taking back over the landscape or if the uh, if the architecture is sort of impeding itself into the environment it, it is a fascinating thing because there's a, obviously the world changed since you've done that trip right. and uh, hence us doing this in front of a camera and the thousands of people out there rather than the hundreds of people in here yeah. on Thursday night. But for me, it's, it's really interesting uh, the, the cool factor of this landscape, not only the landscape, but also the houses within it. Yeah. What, what, what is it about modernism, do you think, that just resonates with so many people? Um, I think it's classic design. It's, it stood the test of time. Uh, Palm Springs, when you go there, it's kind of like a window into the past and everything's yep. so perfectly manicured and it's, it's just so picturesque. And I think um, the way that houses were designed back then was for function and it wasn't so much for a profit as it, it might be these days with the mass production and that sort of thing. So I think the houses have a little bit more, they're a bit more special than what you see today. So I think, a little bit more glamorous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like this shirt. Which sure. yeah, which uh, which matches obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, if it was a little bit later, of course. But yeah, so. um, but I think uh, for for me that it, there's something super progressing in your work. So we've been talking for a couple of years. We've had a small show, and this is just a spectacular body of work. But the the process has changed over that time. You're you're working with airbrushes and, and hand painting and there's a it's for me as a uh, someone who always looks at the way things are done, your technique is spectacular in this. It, it's very much a signature of Tom Adair, just the way you use the, the spray paint. But what what have you been pushing in this exhibition? Uh, so with this one I've I've moved away from using the neon light overlaid from the work. Um, yep. But in doing so, I've actually added an extra few layers of color within the, within the process. So instead of the monochromatic dots, it's now the CMYK, which is the blue, yellow, and magenta with the black. And um, essentially when they, those colors merge together, which is an old printing process, it, it gives you the appearance of the color photograph. 
but it's but it is pixelated. So yeah. yeah, so up close it feels quite abstract, and then the further back you are, yeah, that's the what form. I really love about them is they, they sort of draw you in at the same time as you want to walk away from it. It's yeah, kind of this contrast of the viewing distance. It is it is something that's quite interesting about. Yeah, you know, I, I find your work very pop in that tradition of you know the great American pop artists like Warhol, Rosenquist, etc., who really played with that almost the feeling of billboard and the, the process. And the mechanical reproduction. Yes, yeah, yeah. But but what I think is so successful about this exhibition is the the fact that the work has a um, has that handmade feel about it too. So there are elements in there that are very um, accidental, almost in a, in a way, um, that provide a shimmer in the work. Would that be a fair? Yeah, it definitely adds a human element to the to the work. You can see the imperfections when you're up close, and I think that's what's nice about the paintings, and they're not reproductions of a, a photograph or anything. They're actually mm. produced by hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like they have a little bit more warmth. Yeah, and the and the uh, neon that where where it does appear in in this show is much more stripped back. It's a yeah. So again, going with the climate change thing, I was feeling a little bit uncomfortable with the acrylic framing. Um, yep. So that's something I sort of I've really looked at how I could incorporate timber framing. It's a bit more sustainable, and I've recessed the the neon into the actual work, so it's it's a bit slimmer, and um, it sort of lets it lets the artwork. The painting actually come to the forefront. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a really yeah. good point. I think there's a, a much much greater physicality as paintings. Mm -hmm. I think in the in these works, which are very exciting. They're certainly very physical to lift. Let me tell you, but that's uh, uh, another story. Um, so Tom's show is on for a couple of weeks, and uh, for me, as I mentioned, the 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 fascination of these fragments of, of buildings and in the desert. But those, those, there's, there's something further that I'd like to talk about with, with your work, specific to what's happened in the world in the ensuing couple of months since you did that trip. And it's about thinking about the way we, we perceive ourselves in the world. And a lot of that modernist architecture came from a period of time which was very, very optimistic in America. So it was the time when you know, America challenged the, the world that it would go to the moon. So you go to the moon, you could do any, any, anything. And you know, the glamour and you know, by extension, things like Hollywood, et cetera, et cetera, coming out of that environment um, has permeated much of Western society over that time. And I think uh, I know in the essay to do with the show that um, when I started thinking about your work, it was, it was a different world. And then over the ensuing couple of weeks and months, things have changed a great deal. And I think something that's come out of this exhibition, which is so important to all of us now, is that rekindling of a sense of hope. And I think that's the most beautiful, powerful thing about this work. It's light, it's vibrant, it's bright, it's, it's extremely well made. Uh, but it does give us a sense of hope. It makes us want to look out in the world again. And uh, for that, congratulations. It's an extremely exciting show. Please take the time to have a look through the whole exhibition, either online or if you can make it uh, down here. Um, and uh, thank you for uh, checking in on us and we look forward to speaking soon.